The only people who steal are those who have nothing. Because why would a rich person need to steal an iPhone, a handbag, or a jacket if they already own them or could just buy them with their own money? Similarly, in the dynamics between men and women, it appears the only people who steal are the men who have zero value and zero options. A quick Google search of men convicted of the R word shows pretty much every one of them is in the bottom 5% of attractiveness. Once more painting the picture, the lower value the man, the less options he has, the more likely he is to take and force getting what he desires. Anyway, pivoting away from illegal acts, I believe a general rule exists on a spectrum where the less value and less options a man has, the more likely he is to do something immoral. This ranges from one end, which is a man who is 100% moral, honest and plays by the rules. A middle ground where you see men who cheat, lie about their intentions and hit on women in relationships slash marriages. Then all the way at the far end where you reach illegal territory for men who take by force. And in this video, I'm going to be exploring this topic more in depth, because this could potentially be a massive issue in future. The chart from the thumbnail shows men trapped out of the dating market is at an all-time high of 27%. Plus, I've spoken in plenty of previous videos how the top 10% of men are dominating while the bottom 90% are going further and further behind. So, if this isn't addressed, it could lead to tremendous consequences. Anyway, without getting too extreme, the first thing I want to talk about is two men fighting over the same girl. Something we've all seen before and perhaps the smallest instance of conflict we see in the dating marketplace. I personally have witnessed it play out many times, but the environment I've seen it happen the most, 100%, is nightclubs. The most primal place, I'd argue, men and women can go in the modern day. Now, in my experience, I've seen an interesting dynamic play out when there is a change in the all-important ratio between men and women. Like most nightclubs, men are unlucky and there's usually a surplus of men to women. About 2 to 1, or at worst, 3 to 1. And when it's as bad as this, I see a couple interesting things occur. First of all, of course you have the men who opt out entirely. The guys who loiter like NPCs on the outskirts, sipping their drink occasionally, not talking to anyone. And they do this because they've accepted the game is too competitive. And they know they don't have the value to not only attract the women, but also outcompete the other men. Similar to a not only do you need to afford the overpriced house, but you also need to outbid the most delusional buyer. And I'd put the number of NPCs around 33% of men in a club, thus bringing the effective ratio of guys to girls who are actually getting involved to a slightly more modest 2 to 1. Then of these, next I see happen is these men start competing and becoming territorial in order to draw the attention of women. I'm talking when guys stand with their chest and chin up, elbows out, sharp shoulders and an aggressive look on their face. So the men are not only trying to prove they are attractive to the women, but also signal to the other men that I am the top dog. The number of fights and aggro goes up dramatically the more saturated the dance floor is with men. And the spark that instigates it is almost always two guys competing over the same girl. And adding a further testament to this point is when the ratio is opposite, so there's more women than men, fights never happen. The men keep themselves to themselves and focus on just approaching the girls that are free and available. Now, some of you experienced clubgoers might think a surplus of women to men doesn't exist. But trust me, at nights reserved for students only, I've seen ratios as good as 1 to 2 or 1 to 3. University seriously is that sweet of a deal. So, my first lesson is... Men only become territorial when their resources are scarce. Just like the stealing example. 
Whereas, if resources aren't scarce and they instead have abundance, men feel no need to compete, take, or steal in order to get what they want. Additionally, getting to the next point, I believe everything I've talked about so far can be further extrapolated with regard to men's willingness to play dirty in dating if they have little to no options. I know that was quite a mouthful of a point, but I promise I'm onto something. It might take a couple minutes of explaining and a few examples, but bear with me because I know you'll eventually understand what I mean. So, when I say play dirty, I'm talking about men using strategies that to some would be considered unjust or immoral, but still gets them an unfair advantage. So, a few examples being, one, a man not caring about hitting on a woman even if he knows she is already in a relationship. Two, a man being ambiguous about his intentions and faking the idea he wants a woman long term when in reality he just wants short term. Three, a man who fabricates things about himself such as the amount of money he has, car he has, or the dating options he has, all to increase his chances of getting the woman. And lastly, four, some guys even go as far as lying about the beauty of the woman they are talking to in order to elevate the chances she'll be invested. I hope you see what I mean with these examples. And when it comes to this last one, I found a textbook case a couple days ago that I found hilarious. I'll just read it out. It's from some Facebook post where this skinny guy was hitting on an overweight woman. So, I'm a 21-year-old girl and have never had much interest in dating slash S due to body image issues stemming from being overweight. The thought of letting somebody see my body is very frightening considering how much I hate it. I recently, however, have been talking to someone who is very keen to have S with me. I want to have S with him too, but just hate the thought of him seeing my body, especially as he himself is not overweight at all like I am. Although he insists that he finds my body sexy, I can't help but think he's lying considering how much I hate myself. I can't bear the thought of him seeing me naked. Any other girls experience anything similar who might be able to give me some advice on how to feel more comfortable in my body during S. Especially for the first time. Thanks in advance. So, from that, let's address the elephant in the room. We all know, deep down, the only reason he's complimenting her is because he wants box. He's just stooping low because it's probably the best he can do. As I've pointed out in previous videos, the bottom 90% of men basically have no options in today's dating market, at least immediately available to them. So, if a guy is feeling desperate and has been in a dry spell for a while, he'll likely have no choice but to stoop low and go for the unattractive women. And tying this back, the reason I believe men do this and all the other unsportsmanlike tactics is due to the fact they have zero options. Because let's be honest, if the in-shape guy from the Facebook post actually had attractive options... He certainly wouldn't be going for the overweight women, and he certainly wouldn't be calling them sexy. He's just stooping low. And to support my point even further, notice how women never have to do any of these BS tactics in order to gain an advantage. And that's because they already have an abundance of options. I hope you see my point. Desperate people use desperate strategies. And the bottom 90% of men are so, 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 so desperate in today's market. And this doesn't just apply to dating, but all walks of life. I once had this homeless woman come up to me as I was sitting outside a coffee shop, and it was 10,000% clear she had a history of illicit substance use. Anyway, she tried explaining to me this heartfelt story, how she slept out in the rain last night, and she needed exactly £8 in order to pay for her bus ticket. The story itself sounded rehearsed. I told her, no, I don't have any money. And in response, she said, Oh, well, you can bank transfer me on your phone. Which again showed her whole story was rehearsed because she knows a lot of people will fold in that scenario. I then doubled down and said, no, I'm not interested. So she left. Now, 
What's hilarious is, a week later, I saw the exact same woman walking around, looking for gullible people to approach, and I saw her walk up to this girl. I stared for about 2-3 minutes, then eventually the homeless woman walked away. So, out of curiosity, I went up to the girl who had just been approached and asked her what she wanted. And believe it or not, the story she told me was the exact same one she told her. £8 for a bus ticket. So, you see in this scenario, someone who's desperate is more likely to twist, lie, deceive and manipulate. And this makes sense because they are more willing in order to get what they want. Another example. When it comes to relationships, though official figures show men and women cheat on roughly an equal basis, I would argue the ratio that men cheat relative to their opportunities is far higher than women's. For example, a woman might have 100 opportunities to cheat over the course of a year. Whereas a man, even if he's above average, will have at most one or two. And of those one or two opportunities, a lot of men would still do it. Because they think it might be their only chance. Extending on from that point, a man getting in a relationship and cheating is often a give and take in itself because they know they wouldn't be able to get both the consistency of intimacy a relationship brings and the variety playing the field brings if they didn't fake giving commitment to their girlfriends. For instance, I once watched a video of Tristan Tate and he said, I always tell a woman on a first date I'm seeing lots of other women. It's an open door policy. She can come with me if she wants and if she doesn't like it then the door is there. Now, a man like Tristan Tate can easily say that and not have it impact his options because he's already in the top 1% anyway. But for a man who's only in the top 40 or 30%, he can't do this as he knows his only choice to drive up his abundance is to make false promises such as being in a relationship with a girl and telling any new women he meets that he is completely single. This all ties back to my overarching message that the lower down the totem pole a man is, the more dirty he is going to play. So, this leads to the all-important question. How can you avoid being in a position where you feel the urge to play dirty? You'll likely want to do this for moral reasons if you're a man who sees himself as noble and honourable. But you may also want to do it for internal self-esteem reasons, if you'd like to feel you've beaten the game playing 100% fair. Well, I have two solutions. 1. Practicing stoicism so you feel less of a need to break the rules in order to gain an unfair advantage. You become grateful for the things you already have in your life and don't feel a need to cheat the system so you can get ahead. And 2. Increasing your value as a man so you can win fairly, increasing both the quantity and quality of the women you can attract, whilst being honest about it the whole time doing so. And, in today's day and age, nothing is more important for upping your value as a man than increasing your looks. Forget everything else, looks is king. And, based on this, I am super pleased to share my complete looks maxing program to increase your facial attractiveness by 2 points in 24 hours. The results I've been able to achieve using water retention to get a more defined jawline and to lean a face are on show here. And there's also improvements due to skincare, hair, fashion, etc. Additionally, not only do you receive this, but you also get four exclusive bonuses, including my 25-point first date checklist, which is everything you need to know before a first date, my full advanced SMV maxing guides, my complete dating roadmap to live the optimal dating life as a man, and you get invited to my exclusive WhatsApp community with over 120 men who all have a similar mindset. Now, this is a paid product because this is my job and I don't work for free just like a doctor wouldn't cure diseases for free, and a fireman wouldn't put out fires for free. But it's worth every penny, and I charge a fraction of the price compared to what other YouTube gurus who I personally feel overpromise and underdeliver on what they sell. In fact, my product is actually the same price as a video game, 
and an OF subscription. So, if you enroll in my community, you are already doing better than the tens of thousands of guys who choose these degenerate paths. Anyway, if this all sounds fair to you, and you want to be part of a community with real people to increase your value in the real world and attract real women, then you can head to the description now to purchase. Or, if you want to see an extended explanation of the details and all the value you'll receive, then I also have right here on YouTube my explainer video breaking down the program more in depth. Again, link in the description. See you on the inside and thanks for watching.